Hey guys, Robbie Webster here, and it's time for part two of the Akira Kurosawa Appreciation Night. It's actually a totally different night for me. I plan on doing a whole bunch of these um, videos where I just each time watch an Akira Kurosawa film and enjoy it and let you guys enjoy the experience with me. And this time we're actually in my living room. So at this point in time, I haven't filmed a like tour video of the um, of the house, so. I'm not sure if that will be filmed and uploaded before this or not, but if it isn't, you guys might get your first sneak peek at the inside of the house today. Um, I don't plan on showing you much, but you might see a little bit inside the living room. So, yeah, enjoy that. Um, tonight, I'm going to be watching... I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce this, but I believe it's Cage Musha. And, and if I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me. And this is the Criterion Collection Blu-ray... I believe that this is also a part of that DVD set that I have, too. But I'm not 100% sure. This is spine number 267. So, yeah. Let me go get something to eat, and then we'll pop this baby in. Okay, so right here I have my food for the night. I got a chicken finger sub with provolone cheese. The chicken fingers were actually dipped in buffalo mild sauce. There's provolone cheese and bacon on there and it's very good it's not very healthy and then I have some blue cheese here on the side that I'm gonna add to it it's very good though this is from Salvatore's Pizzeria which is a really well-known place here in Rochester and then to drink I have some Mountain Dew Code Red with some ice in it so yeah this should be be good let's open up this blu-ray and pop it in and I gotta keep Chewy away from my food so yeah getting excited Okay, so I figured I'll show you what the inside of this looks like. But first of all, real quick, I'm a little upset. Some of the plastic stuck to the spine. This is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to movie-related things that annoy me. And as you can see, you know, Chewie just rubs up on me whenever I have some, I'm holding something in my hands. But if they just flip this machine over when they put this, the plastic wrap on it, all the seal would be on this side. So I wouldn't care if it had some plastic stuck to this side. But now I have plastic stuck to the spine. And these Blu-ray cases, the Criterion Blu-ray cases, cost between 3 to $5 each to replace. So thankfully I do have a few, so I will replace this. But it's just annoying because they're so expensive. So let's open this up and see what it looks like on the inside. Chewy is right in my up in my grill. There's the, the uh, disc right there. Let's go ahead and put this right in the Blu-ray player. And then right here there's a nice booklet. And there isn't any artwork on the inside. It's just black. Which is kind of disappointing, but it's alright. This, this thing has a lot of artwork on the inside. Very cool. And I have never seen this film, so I'm very much so looking forward to watching it. And I'll let you guys know what it's about and what I thought about it. And yeah, then we'll go from there. As always, the picture quality looks amazing. Even the menus are awesome on these Criterion Blu-rays. <sighs> yeah. So, let me take a bite of this food so you guys can see me enjoying it and feel jealous. Mmm. Delicious. So good. It's just awesome. And I forgot to say, this film is from 1980, so it's the newest Kurosawa film that I've ever seen. So, looking forward to seeing what it's like. It's also actually going to be the first Kurosawa film that I've seen in color. So, yeah. Julie, you sleeping? Julie. So it's cute. 
So far, the movie's pretty good. Hi, Chewie. Are you looking at the camera strap? Oh, you got it. <laughs> You're silly. Hi. She likes to sit on my lap. She never stops sitting on my lap. Yeah. She's not too interested in the movie, though. Are ya? Hey guys, Robbie Webster here. First of all, I want to tell you... Oh, by the way, I'm done with the movie now. It was really good. Before I give you the review, i got to tell you a couple things. Cage Musha means the Shadow Warrior. So, I know that now. I learned that, like, in the opening titles. And then I realized, um, when I was looking at this booklet, that all the artwork in here is actually done by Akira Kurosawa himself. I guess he's a very good artist, and he, um, he made these when he was waiting for funding for this film, um, for, I believe he was waiting for, like, international funding, and I think that, um, Francis Ford Coppola and George Lucas ended up producing the international version of Cage Musha, and I really like the movie, so, very cool, this art is awesome, very well done, I mean, this guy is, is truly an artist, in several different ways. So yeah, highly recommend this film. Okay, so here's just a really very quick review of the film. Uh, I thought it was amazing. It was visually stunning. Uh, definitely the most beautifully filmed um, Kira Kurosawa scene I've seen just because of the quality of the film. Uh, the fact that he was able to um, work with 20th Century Fox as opposed to uh, Toho. I believe that's the name of his studio. Um, I guess they use better quality film from what I've read. So, yeah, that was very cool. Um, the acting was good. The story was cool. It, it was uh, depicted real-life events. It was about a warlord who is killed by a sniper's bullet, and um, he has this look-alike that they found that was a peasant. He was a thief, and um, he ended up having to take over and pretend to be the warlord so that the enemy and even the own troops thought that he was still alive so let me um show you guys the picture here in my book this is the same book i used the last time see it says cage musha 1980 has a nice screenshot there and i'll read you this uh essay so if you haven't seen the film yet don't don't um don't watch this part of the video you can just stop the video now but it says Kurosawa's first samurai film in two decades, in the first picture he had made in Japan since Dades Kaden, who a co-production co was a co-production of Toho and 20th Century Fox, made possible through the support of directors George Lucas and Francis Ford Coppola. Tatsuya, Tatsuya Nakadai plays a thief who impersonates the war horse Sinjen Takeda after he is killed by a sniper's bullet. Sorry, guys, I'm going to butcher a lot of these names because I'm just not very good at pronouncing Japanese names, apparently. <laughs> a historical drama, Cage Musha differs from Kurosawa's other samurai movies in that it portrays real people and events. The climax is the Battle of Nagashino in 1575, in which the Takeda clan is wiped out by an opposing army using rifles. For Kurosawa, the rifle embodies the dawn of the modern age and the end of the samurai. Filmed in 1.85 to 1 widescreen rather than the anamorphic 2.35 to 1 ratio of Toho Scope, this is a film of great pictorial beauty. In brilliant color, Kurosawa shows samurai armies on the march, fluttering sashimono flags that bear clan insignia, fiery sunsets, and flaming assaults on enemy castles, and the grand procession of horses that he had wanted in 1945 when he first planned to tell this story, but made The Men Who Tread on the Tiger's Tail instead. The film is a series of paintings in motion. Indeed, Kurosawa painted the imagery he planned for the film before he actually shot it. Sutomu Sutom, Sutom, Yamazaki, who had key roles in High and Low and Redbeard, plays Shinjin's brother, Nobu, Nobukado, and Takashi Shimura and Kamatari... Fujiwara made their final appearances for Kurosawa in small roles. In Cage Musha, Kurosawa shows the destruction of by modernity of the samurai world that he loved, 
As an artist, he has now embraced an increasingly nostalgic past. So yeah, that's it guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and the experience of watching this movie with me. And I look forward to making more of these in the future. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening to Chewie meow throughout the entire video. Say bye, Chewie. Bye, guys.